This morning, beloved, I am beginning a new series for the month of May entitled One Thing. And this is my theory, Uncle George Deacon Mary. My theory, my thesis for this sermon and this series is simply this in one sentence. In life, one of the hardest things to do is to settle on one thing. And yet, beloved, despite that challenge, despite the tension that comes with that, the ability to do that, the strength to do that, the sagacity, the nerve, the energy to do that is one of the most rewarding efforts that you and I can make. And so today, I want to look at as we begin this series for the month of May, I want to look at this idea of one desire. One desire. And I want to look, deacons, at what it looks like to live our lives amid all the options that we have. And God in heaven knows we got a whole lot of options out here. When I was a boy uh, growing up, I, I, I'm going to date myself. I know that I'm old, but it's all right. When I was a boy growing up, uh, we had uh, several TV channels. ABC, NBC, CBS. <laughs> Y'all ain't helping me. ABC, NBC, CBS. And then in New York, we had Channel 13, which was, uh, Deacon Rose, now you remember, uh, that was kind of like the public service channel. And wasn't nothing on there good. It was all boring. Those were our channels. Those were our options. And uh, in those days, uh, we had a remote control. It was the youngest person in the family. <laughs> and, and if you were... If you were the youngest person in your family, uh, you, you were hoping and praying that your parents didn't believe in birth control and they would have another child so that you could boss somebody and tell them, get up, change the channel. <laughs> now, uh, now, some of us, and I'm going to move on because I don't want to you know, talk about y'all too bad. Uh, some of us only had one TV, black and white. And uh, sometimes, over time, handle it broken off, the dial broke off, so we had a pair of pliers. <laughs> I wish I had a church online. Come on, we had a pair of pliers. And, and then your grandmother, your mother, your dad, whoever I tell you, now, now don't turn it too fast, because you're going to strip it. <laughs> so turn it slow. Those were our options back in the day. Now we live in a day and time when there is, how shall I say it, a plethora of choices and options that we have uh, on TV. We can watch TV uh, on our television, flat screen on the wall, or you can watch it on your laptop, or you can watch it on your iPad, or you can watch it on your phone. And now we've gotten so sophisticated, we have become so advanced in our use of technology, you can watch it on your watch. We live in a world, we live in a day, we live in a time when we have an abundance, uh, almost an embarrassing abundance of options. When I was a boy growing up, uh, you, you ate what was set before you. And if you had the timidity, the gall, the nerve, the audacity to tell Big Mama you didn't like it, then Big Mama had the nerve to tell you that you ain't hungry. <laughs> and then my grandma tell you, this is not a restaurant. This is my kitchen. And you don't pick. There's no menu here. Whatever I cooked is what's on the menu. Now we've got an option. There was a time when African Americans, those of us of African American descent, uh, did not have the options for travel. Um, we had the, there were those things, uh, Deacon Logan, Pop Logan, known as green books. 
I wish I had help up here, that Negroes, colored folk, had to use. It told us where you could stop, where you could eat, what gas stations were friendly to people of color. And now, bless God, we can go anywhere, stay anywhere, eat anywhere because of the struggle and the sacrifices, I feel like preaching this, of those who have gone before us. Our lives are filled with options. Was a time when um, the only places, Dr. Fontenot, I'll say this, uh, the two of you, you're in education, uh, when, when the only place we could go for higher education was to an HBCU, historically black college or university. Fisk and Morehouse and Spellman and Howard and Mahiri. Why are y'all getting quiet on me? Lincoln. Come on. The only places we could go was North Carolina A&T. Historically black colleges and universities. But now, somebody holler now. We can go anywhere from Harvard to Yale to Princeton. We can go anywhere to anywhere our skill, our scholarship will take us. We can compete. We can apply. We can be accepted. And while I'm saying that, I might well say it. And how even though we're thankful and we celebrate the entrance into these what we once called Ivy League schools, we must not forget nor neglect those historic institutions that were there for us when nobody else, I feel a preach right there. I was, uh, huh, I was in conversation this week with some friends, brothers in ministry of mine, and one of them was sharing with us that ITC, the Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, part of the uh, Morehouse family, part of that marvelous uh, school there in Atlanta that makes up Spelman and Morehouse and other institutions of higher learning, that whole sisters thing and brothers. That, that, that institution is on the brink of shutting down. Train black preachers. Train black scholars. Train black theologians. When we could not get into Harvard Divinity School or Yale or Princeton, we could get into ITC. And now that school is on the brink of shutting down because we've moved on because of our options. Thank you, Deacon Angie. Just, just last year, we celebrated uh, how, how one of the colleges there in Atlanta was able to be saved because they had lost their accreditation. Mars Brown, we, 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 brothers and sisters, y'all help me preach today. While we celebrate our growth, our expansion, while we celebrate all that God has done for us and given us, we must never forget the rock from which we're hewn or the rivers from which we have drank. Oh. Everywhere we turn, there are options. And amid the plethora, the abundance of options, one of the greatest things you and I can do is develop the skill to focus on one thing. <laughs> it, it's what separates those who are truly successful from those who are not. This ability with laser-like focus to zero in on one thing. I want to lift that up all month long. I, I want to lift up various ways and various aspects of what it looks like to live a life focused on one thing. And today, I want to talk about focusing your life on one desire. A lot of things you can want in life, my God. 
A lot of things we want. I'm sitting there looking at you, looking at these names of those hundreds who are online. A lot of things you can want in life. But beloved, hear me. You will never be great or successful until you can narrow your desires down to one thing. Woo, I'm preaching good and y'all don't know it. It's what Psalm in the text today is about Psalm 27, one of the best known, most loved psalms in that whole 150 page hymnal of the nation of Israel. Psalm 27, we, we love it, we quote it. It, it, it fills us and reverberates in us, it resonates and resounds with us. The Lord is my light, <laughs> my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord, strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What a what a wonderful way, Aaron, to open it up. The Lord. I, I, I want to preach that, but I won't. The Lord, not my money, not my four hundred one k, not my IRA. The Lord, not my friends, not my hookup. The Lord. Is my, not my husband, not my wife, not my children, not my boo, not my BFF. The Lord yeah. is my light yeah. and my salvation. Whom yeah. shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Now you do know that in the canonical structure of that text, that is a rhetorical question. Lord is my light, my salvation. Lord strength my life. Who shall I be afraid? That's rhetorical. Because the answer is, if those two things are true, nobody. <laughs> Y'all missed it. If the Lord is my light and the Lord Adonai is my salvation, whom shall I fear? Answer is nobody. <laughs> Because greater is he. I wish I had a Bible quoting church that is in me than he that is in the world. Psalm 27, one of the grand portions of the hymnal of Israel. Page 27. Anytime they, the worship leader said, turn to page 27 in your hymnal. Israel got happy because they knew they was going to sing one of the good songs. The Lord is my life. My salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord. Strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It's a moving song. But I was doing some research in this, and I discovered that as enamored as I am with Psalm 27, you know me, I just, you know, I just love the Bible. I'm so enamored with it. I discovered in my research, my Mary, not everybody is as enamored with Psalm 27 as I am. I was doing some research among the scholars. And uh, I discovered that there are scholars who take apart Psalm 27 and they find some fault with it and they even intimate. Uh, you got time for me to talk about this? I need your permission because like you're getting ready to go to sleep on me. And that would be so rude. <laughs> they intimate that maybe David was going through something because um, in verses 1 through 6, if you have your Bible on an iPad or, in, or a real Bible, open it and look at it. Verses 1 through 6, it starts out with this crescendo. I just, DP, I just preach it. Y'all were shouting, the Lord is my life, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When, when the wicked, even my foes, my enemies came upon me, teed up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a whole should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Just, I mean, he just, Pop, he just working it. If he was a black preacher, he'd be yanking it. He'd be, say it, Doc. <laughs> He's hooping it, verses 1 through 6. And then you get down to verse 7. And it looks as if something happened to David. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me. Answer me. Look at verse 8. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Look at verse 9. Do not hide your, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You've been my help. Do not leave me. Do not forsake me. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What happened to the Lord? 
is Kevin taking note. What happened to the Lord? Is my life. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And, and here's what scholars say, Lee. Scholars say that, that something happens between verses 1 through 6 and 7 through 14. That, that, that David obviously goes through something and he shifts. And I was getting ready, Deacon Bernadine Pickens, I was getting ready to, uh, I was getting ready to, to just delete those commentaries from my iPad. I thought about away with you heathens. I thought this is ungodly. And then I thought, wait a minute. Maybe they have a point. I'm, I'm coming for you. Work with me. Because I said to myself, self, nobody else was in the room, so that's the only person I could talk to. I said, self, haven't you had time? Y'all ain't helping me. See, see, some folk call it mood swings. Child, I'm going through a mood swing. Child, what's wrong with you? No, no, here's what I learned. It, it's not a mood swing, it's reality. Because there are times in our lives, Brother Brown, when one moment we are up and we're positive and we're confident and we're sure. And in less than 10 minutes, something can happen and we find ourselves questioning what we, I wish I had a real. I'm so tired of fake phony saints. I wish I had some real saints in here who say I do that several times a day. I got this great testimony but then life slaps me in my face and I'm like David saying now wait a minute. Where are you? Don't leave me. Don't forsake me. Life would, can somebody holler life would do that. Listen, and here it is, I'm through. And Lori, I believe everything I say in verse 1 through 6 and everything I say in 7 through 14. Didn't Gary Crawl? Oftentimes, my skies are clear. Joys abound without a tear. But still a day shall fear begun. Clouds may hide tomorrow's sun. I do not know how long it will be. I wish I had old folk in here. Or what the future holds for me. But this I know. If Jesus leads me, I shall get home someday. I was going to throw them commentators away till I said, wait a minute, bro. Haven't you been there? Yeah, yeah. Haven't you in the morning had a wonderful morning devotion? Felt like God was in the room with you? And then get to work? And now the devil is in the room with you. I wish I had a church up in here. Nah. Have you ever had a moment when you're singing in the car, rejoicing in the Lord, and then get to the classroom and some little... Ninja <laughs> robbed you of your joy. Yes, sir. Top of neighbor say, I live in both parts of Psalm 27. <laughs> no, no, I need real saints on a rainy day. I mean, since you came out in the rain, let's just tell the truth. Somebody holler, I live in both parts of Psalm 27. True. Psalm 1, verse 1 through 6, Psalm 27, victorious, exclamatory, proclamation, declaration. And then, them other verses, David's acting like, I ain't sure, I don't know, God, are you really? Now don't you, don't be fooling me, God, don't hide your faith, don't forsake me, don't turn your, don't turn your servant away in anger. Yeah. 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 Dwight, how can those two competing ideas be concurrently true at the same time while running on separate tracks. I keep waiting on them to crash into each other, but they don't. Because the tension in the text is the reality of our human predicament. Tabernacles, it's not a mood swing, it's life. It's 
life, Lee, it's life. Life, life can bring you to kind of play. I don't mean in a week, in a day. Okay, I'm going to try it one more time. I don't mean in an hour. Somebody said to me when they lost a loved one here in this church and I asked them how they were doing, they said, I'm all over the map. I said, well, at least you're on the map. Yeah. Now, if you ever march off the map to a place we don't know, then we're in trouble. But as long as you're on the map, we can find you. We can come get you wherever you are. We live, we live. Don't we live, don't we live in both realities of Psalm 27? Lord is my light, my salvation, whom shall I fear? Now, Lord, don't you leave me. Don't forsake me. Don't turn me over to my enemies. Scholars say something wrong with David. Ain't nothing wrong with David. David's living like I live in Columbus, Ohio. Dealing with what life brings my way. Well, here's what blessed me, y'all. I'm through. Here's what blessed me. Here's what blessed me. Because in this psalm, there is verse 4. Four sort of sits in between six and seven and uh, stops seven through 14 from getting too bad. Here's what David says. It's, it's blessed me. It's this affirmation. David says, uh, one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I love that church. Let me say it again. I love that church. Let me say it one more time because y'all didn't help me. I said I love that church. Amid all he's facing, enemies around him, desertion by fellow soldiers, rebellion from his own son. David says, there's one thing I want. God help me preach this. And it's not just victory over my enemies. Okay, I done lost y'all right there. Because see, that's the problem. We want to get back and forth. We want, no, David says, I don't want victory. I mean, if it comes, that's nice. I don't even want the throne back. If I don't get back on the throne, that's that's all right. Here's what I want. One thing have I desired from the Lord that will I seek after. I want to be where God is. God, I wish I had a... Come on, would you tell your neighbor say, that's what I want. Just to be close to you. To be where you are. I want to be... Listen, if I don't get back to Jerusalem, if I don't get to thrown back, if Absalom reigns, if Saul kills me, whatever life brings my way, here's what I want. I want to stick with God. Tell the neighbor, say, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Because whether or not you and I know it, Tracy, when the smoke clears and the dust settles, you are going to need God more than you need. Yeah, one thing have I desired. Can I ask you real quick and I'm going to let you go. Have you determined what your one thing is? What do you desire most and more than anything else? Come on, come on. See, 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 watch this, Lee. Watch this, Tracy. What, what, watch this, watch this, Sister Yvonne. Hear this. We got this laundry list of things, Christmas wish list. We got, God, I want this. God, I desire this. God, I desire that. What if God said, okay, out of all is my grandson here? He's still here. Help him. I, I'm going to use him for illustration. His birthday is Friday. He and little lady got the same birthday, May 12th. They bought on the same day. And uh, so he texted me yesterday. We, we together in the car. He texted me. <laughs> we in the car. He texted me. And he texted me this picture of something. And he said, this is all I want for my birthday. So I look at it. And I say, okay, well, that's nice. Then we get, I don't know, we were going, so we get somewhere, and he shows me, she says, this is what I want from my, I said, what happened to all I want? <laughs> this is all I want for my birthday. Now you show me something else you want. That's how we do God. God, this is all I want. If you, okay, here, here, here's the fib we pray. Lord, if you just do this one thing for me, I ain't gonna bother you no more this year. Why you lie to God like that? <laughs> but if Lee, if Daryl, God told you, I will grant you one desire. 
Oh, Christina, could you narrow your list down and say, God, one thing have I desired of you. Wow. You really want to live a meaningful life? Focus on one desire. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Let me tell a neighbor, I need to know how to do that. No, you, you didn't say it. Tell a neighbor, I need to know how to do that. Good, I'm going to tell you right now in the next five minutes and 47 seconds because we got to serve the supper. Here it is. You ready? Are you ready? I said, are you ready? If I am going to find the capacity, the ability to focus on one desire, here's the first thing. That desire must pass the value test. If I must choose and choose I must and there's so much to choose from, I told you it's a plethora, choices and options, an array, a dizzying array, Uncle Joe, I did, it make your head spin. I was in the supermarket the other day and got dizzy because I just, I was looking for something and I thought, and I went to what I asked, I said, where is, I forget what it was, whatever it was, I said, where is it? And she says, in the house, so and so I went there and my God, there was like 50 choices. Yeah. Shopping was so much easier. If I wanted syrup, I had Aunt Jemima Log Cabin in Alaga. That was. Child, now you got Mrs. Butterworth and Mrs. Duckworth. And how, how, do, how, do I, how do I? How do I? How do I? How do I get one design? Here's how. You must, you, here you got to ask yourself this question. Does my desire pass the value test? I'm preaching to unsaved and saved folk today. Because some of you unsaved folk jacking your life up. Chasing after every, okay, I'm sorry. Almost at everything and everybody. But anyway. Does it pass the value test? Okay, here's what I mean. Is it worthy? of being your one desire? Is it, does it have intrinsic value that elevates it to worthiness of being the one desire of your life? Let me tell you how you answer that question. A, is it worth the investment I have to make in it? If I invest in this relationship, if I invest in this career, if I invest in this, in this, uh, this stock uh, or this bond or this, if I invest in this portfolio, if, if, is it worth the investment I'm going to make in it? Here's B. Is it worth my involvement? Here's why, baby. I don't know how to tell you this. I don't care how young you are. You getting older. If you're 14, you're going to be 15. And it, I mean, here's what's going to happen. Everything accelerates. The five years between 15 and 20 move so quick, you're going to get a dizzy spell. And if you think that went fast, wait to 20 to 25. You thought that was fast, wait 25 to 30. And baby, you better get you a seatbelt because 35 to 40, 45 to 50, 55. So tell somebody, it just speeds up. It just speeds up. Which means, stay with me, which means, watch this, Sister Barbara Webb, online. You don't have time to be involved in everything. Stop, I'm preaching real good. Stop, stop, Demita, stop spreading yourself so thin. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Please help me say that not sound caustic. Stop spreading yourself so thin that you become so weak that your presence doesn't make a difference because you have no impact. God help me. You can't be everywhere and bring your best self to anything. You've got to harness yourself. You've got to restrain yourself. You've got to reserve. Am I 
preaching all right today. You got to make up your mind. Everything is not worth my investment or my involvement. Oh, Jerry Cunningham, last week I was asked to do something. I got to be careful because some of them online who were. Uh, I was asked to do something. And DR normally, because of the, of the organization, I would have answered Reverend Nanny immediately, yes. And I said to them, would you give me a couple of days to pray about it? And they said, why? I said, because at my age now, I'm asking myself. Do I have the bandwidth to invest in this? Because when I get in something, I'm in it whole hog. I'm not lackadaisical. I'm not, I'm not half-hearted. And I don't have as much time as I used to have. I don't have as much life. As, okay, y'all getting quiet. As I used to have. Everything I do now has to count. And I'd rather give money than my time to some stuff. I wish I had help up in here. Ask yourself, does it pass the value test? Is it worth the investment? Is it worth my involvement? Okay, here's, this is going to sound so carnal. I thought of Deacon Ted Murdoch when I wrote this. And will it result in any interest? Do I get any, any ROI? Do I get any return on my investment? Y'all got so quiet then. Do I, will I get anything? I, when, when, I, when I give this, what can I look back on and say that was worth that investment? That was worth my involvement. Look at the fruit that accrues from this. Here's the second thing. Our desire must pass the vision test. Vision test. Now, this presupposes you got a vision for your life. Okay, let me say this, DP. I'm going to say the move. And if you don't, everybody else will. So I suggest you get one as quickly as you can. Because, baby, folk will be, you know, I really think you ought to do this. And, you know, I think you should do this. And, you know, I think you'd be wonderful doing that. And before you know it, you are like the man Pop Wyatt talked about, jumped on his horse and went off in all directions at the same time. What's your vision? Because if, you, if you're going to have one desire, it better pass your vision test. All right? Here it is. Write these down. Does it support my purpose? Does it support my purpose? Does it support my passion? Is it, okay, here it is. I got to hurry. Is it something I can be excited about, not just today, but in a year? Come on, if, if, if you're not going to be passionate about it in three weeks, why do it? Why do it? It, it, it ought to motivate you and stimulate you for years, for years. If it's your one desire, it ought to stimulate you for your lifetime. Does it support my passion? Does it support my purpose? And does it support the priorities I've made in my life? So if, if, if your priorities in life are your faith and your family, then does this, does this desire take you from faith and family? Does it mess up your priorities? Does it skew your priorities? Come on, what are your priorities? Because my, my one desire has to support my purpose, my passion, and my priority. Is this helping anyone? Okay, here it is. Here it is. And then your desire must pass the vocation test. Vocation, the, the, our Catholic brothers and sisters in the Latin call this vocatus. <laughs> the vocation has to do with your calling. Catholics believe everybody, not just the priests and, and the sisters, the nuns, but every Catholic has a vocation, a vocatus, a calling. Why y'all got quiet? Every, every believer has a calling. Okay, y'all look at me like, like, like I got two heads. Say, I have a calling. Amen. God has called you. to. He's called you to do something. You've got to find out what your calling is. 
and it'll be tied to your giftedness. Okay, I got to stop. So, so this one, everybody say one desire has to pass the vocation test. Does it, does, it, does it line up with my calling? How do I know if it lines up with my calling? I'm glad you asked. Hey, does it line up with my assignment? <laughs> does it line up with my assignment? And, and I'm going to say this, sweetheart, baby, dear, bruh, I'm going to say this. And everything and everybody is not your assignment. Now, I want, I want to set somebody free today, online in the room. You, you just hooking up with everything, everybody, and they are not, and that's why you're frustrated. And, and, come on, because they're not your assignment. They never were. They're just something you took on. I'm preaching so good today in my little white castle. No, 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 no. Everything is not your assignment. got to ask yourself, does it line up with, if it's my calling, does it line up with my assignment? Here's the next thing. Does my desire, this is going to be tough, but work with me. Does it line up with my ability? Because, 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 because you shouldn't have to have a stroke trying to do it. Somebody said to me the other day, said, uh, when I tell you day some time ago, I, I don't know if I'm called to preach or not. I said, why? I said, because every time I, I think about getting up in front of people, I throw up. I thought, you ain't called. <laughs> oh, I can answer that for you right now. <laughs> On behalf of all of us who don't want to see that. <laughs> you ain't called. Because your calling will never, will never be beyond your ability. Come on, come on. I know I'm called to preach because I can preach morning, noon, and night. You can wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I'll preach you up under the chair. I'll stand up in the bed and preach in my PJs and kill you. Because that's my calling. I have the ability to do that. I can teach at the drop of a hat. You could ask me to have a lesson in three minutes. And I can teach. I'm not bragging. I'm telling you how God works. Everybody, how about ability? Lawrence, it's your ability. To, why have a desire that breaks you out in hives? Itching and scratching and putting on calamine lotion? Oh, that's my desire. It ought not be. Here, okay, I got to go. Dwight, his yoke is easy. His burden is light. Preaching is not a burden for me. It's not a chore. I don't go, God, I got to preach. God, thank you, I get to preach. I can preach myself well. I can be sick and get up here and preach myself back into good health. It's not a burden, it's a joy. God, I'm here and I feel the Holy Ghost. Tell the neighbor, say, is it your assignment? Does it line up with your ability? And I got to go. I told Pug 30 minutes and I done took 40. Does, it, does my desire line up with my anointing? I think I'll close right there. Tell the neighbor, say, neighbor, I know you're trying to figure out how I do what I do. Just say, it's the anointing. Because the anointing makes all the difference in the world. I feel a preach right there. Come on, don't y'all do that to me. Come on, Winston, don't do me like that. Tap a neighbor, say neighbor. It isn't by might and it isn't by power, but it's by his spirit that I'm able to do what I do because the anointing of the Lord is on my life. Would you turn, turn to a neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, don't hate on me, don't be jealous of me, don't talk about me, because when you see me doing what I'm doing, it's the anointing that's on my life. 
And is there anybody in the house today and online who knows the anointing not only makes the difference, but the anointing destroys the yoke? Tell a neighbor, that's why I want a choir that's not just skilled, but anointed. I want musicians that aren't just trained, but anointed. I don't want a preacher who's just eloquent and loquacious, but in my life, I need a preacher that's anointed. Is there anybody here who can shout with me because you've seen the anointing and the anointing made your life at another level. The anointing made you walk right and talk right and do right and live right. Somebody holler, thank you for the anointing. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in his temple I want to be where God is because wherever God is there's peace and power there's promotion and prosperity somebody holler that's fine oh Somebody holler, that's my desire to be where you are. That's my. I want to live so God can use me anytime, anywhere. I want to live so God can use me. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. That's my desire. I want to be where. God is. Everybody stand and look at the neighbor. Say, neighbor. What's your desire? Woo. What's your desire? Amid the plethora and abundance of options we have today, what is your desire?